Good morning. I'm glad you're able to take a moment to devote yourself to worship this weekend. Uh, a brief announcement as we get started. It may be that worship based on online video may be co more common going forward than I would prefer, than any of us would prefer. What comes easily in person is what we're missing. What comes easily in person is noticing who's excited and asking, or look, noticing who doesn't, looks like the week is about done him in. And, and, and we're not able to just grab people and ask, can you give me a hand with something? Or have you heard about? Like we just, we're not in person right now, and that makes it a lot harder to stay together as a church. And, and so I do have a request, uh, please. A comment on this post. Uh, most 90% of people are getting to this video from Facebook. Right? I, I can see that. I can't see who watches, but I can see how people get to this video. And most of the people are coming here from Facebook. And so please, uh, can you comment upon the post? Let me know you're here. Hey, glad to be here for worship. Just let, let me know. And also, um, Send me any prayer requests, anything that's going on. Uh, just let's be involved in ways that we can be. I mean, even if it's to comment to cheer on the person who did the reading. Like, Lindsay Perotti did a great job doing the reading last, last uh, weekend. And it just to cheer people on, just let, let's do what we can uh, to keep as close as we can during this time when we are separated so often. Uh, and please know that uh, I, I just continue to miss you. Uh, it's harder right now to keep up with each other, and, and I miss being able to gather with you in, in person. Uh, and I look forward to the day when we are going to be able to, to do so again safely. I hope it is soon. The reading this morning comes from what's called the Magnificat. It's the response of Mary to her aunt Elizabeth, um, knowing that uh, they're both pregnant, and we have uh, someone here to read that for us this morning. All right, this is Tatum. Can you tell everyone hi? And Payne's down here hiding too. <laughs> Um, I am reading Luke verse 39 through 56. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. When, in a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the children you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of any Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is His name. His mercy extends for those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with His arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. Thank you, Andrea. I love musicals, right? I've said this before, it's not a surprise, but I appreciate greatly the way that musicals tell stories in a way that, that it 
captures emotion, and when things start getting poignant or important or hard or interesting, and people don't just keep on talking, they, they launch into song, because to sing something can, can just carries more, just more emotion, more to it, right? And... Um, it's a bit odd to us today, the idea of just bursting into song. It's not something that, that we commonly do, but to, to read about someone bursting into song tells us something about the, the, what's going on, like how moving that moment is. And that's what we find today in what we just heard. Um, we are hearing the song that Mary breaks into as she is talking to Elizabeth. And this is a big moment. This is a huge moment for both of them because they're, they're coming together and both of them are expecting a child. Both of these children are, are a gift from God, one John the Baptist and then Jesus. And both of them are having these children in very unexpected circumstances. So for them to see each other and for them to see each other and receive the, the good news of this, this child to be born as a gift and for them not to be doubted or questioned, but just to be accepted. Like this is a moment that Elizabeth is just ecstatic about. And so is Mary, right? And so they believe each other and this is, they're excited. And as amusing as it is in my mind, to imagine uh, Elizabeth and, and Mary sort of like bursting into song as like sing, dancing, uh, singing in the rain and singing uh, on a, holding on to a, 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 a post and while the rain comes down or like West Side Story like dancing as they go. That, that really isn't the type of song that they burst into. The song that they're bursting into first for a few verses Elizabeth and then what we're looking at with Mary is the song formed by the century of the Jewish people uh, reading and singing and living the Psalms. That's what forms Mary's uh, song today. The, the, the Psalms that are the prayer book of the Jewish people and our prayer book as well. That they, they had formed, if you go back to 1 Samuel, you'll find the, the song that Hannah sings when Hannah finds out she is going to have a child, which is a gift because that, that child will be Samuel who will lead uh, the Jewish people to have their, their, uh, their first king. And so it's a big deal. Like they're singing their excitement and their joy about what God is going to do. And out of that, having been raised singing these psalms, Mary launches into her own. And she begins by proclaiming that she is bursting with good news from God, this God who, who saw her and the possibilities that can happen in her, did not see a problem that from now on she will always be remembered. That's how she begins this song. And then the song of Mary gets interesting. Because if you read it, she goes on to say that, the, that God scatters the braggarts, knocks the tyrants off their horses, pulls victim from, victims from the mud, that God will serve a banquet to the hungry while the rich are out in the cold. For her to sing that this is going to be what happens with the birth of this child, that this is how God's responding, is to acknowledge that this is what's happening, right? Is to acknowledge that there are tyrants, that there are hungry, that there are people who are so callous that they wallow in their vast uh, wealth while there are others who are, are cold and, and hungry and victims, right? And th so there's a sense of like Mary is singing that there's going to be a solution to this problem, but for her to sing that begins with her saying, or acknowledging or knowing that there is a problem. Now, I have never been, this is, should come as no surprise, I have never been a pregnant woman. I make no claim to speak for that experience, but I'm going to, I'm going to venture a guess about this. And I'm going to venture a guess about this based upon my experience as a parent, and I'm going to guess that it's something that many of you have experienced as well. Well, see, see if this makes sense. I know that for myself, I can put up with a lot. Because I'm choosing, right? If someone does me wrong, I can choose whether it is time to stand 
or whether it's time to roll with it. Right? I make those cho choices because I, I'm making, I'm an adult, I'm, I, I know I have my own, like I, I just, I'm fine, right? I'll deal with it. After I got married, I'm married to another adult, right? And there have been moments when people have not treated my wife, Olivia, with the respect that she and every person deserves. And I, again, I choose how to respond in that moment. We sit down, we figure it out, right? And I know that my temptation is to wade in and to get involved, but I also know that I, she doesn't need me to do that. And that in doing that, I, I'm actually undercutting her. If I, if I was to do that, would be to undercut her to imply that she can't handle the problems that she faces, and she can. And so my, my role in that moment, whenever someone doesn't treat my wife uh, with the dignity that she and all people deserve, that uh, my, my role, my job is to support her and to help her as she decides how she is going to respond, right? But when it comes to my children, now, I, I don't remember the context of the first time this happened. I don't remember exactly what way it was that I felt like someone was not treating my daughter with the respect that she deserves. But in that moment, like I distinctly remember where I was and like which way I was facing. And I remember beginning to raise my voice as I found in myself an intensity of a reaction that I did not see coming. Like someone has done my daughter wrong and I was ready to do something. Right? <laughs> right? I, can, I know I can put up with a lot. And I can fully support my wife as she deals with whatever she does. But in that moment, I, I had this profound sense that my child deserves a world that treats her with dignity and respect. My children deserve a world that is right and true and good. I, I don't think I'm alone <laughs> in, in having that intensity of response right it, rooted in this response is this honesty about that the world is not as it should be and, and i can deal with it for myself but there's a, this deep anger that it should be better i can only imagine what that would feel like as a mother a young mother who knows that there is a world out there in which there are braggarts and tyrants. And that's what this, this song that she sings names, right? There are poor who starve while others eat plenty and are callous to that need. Right? And so this song of Mary, it is an odd mix, right? It's an odd mix of honesty about the brokenness of the world that she is in. That fuels an angry anger that like, this is not how the world should be. But thankfully, she sings this song with a hope, a profound hope at what the world will become, right? Because she knows that with the birth of this child, this gift from God, the Son of God, that this is the beginning of tyrants being knocked down, of starving being invited to feast, and that God's chosen people will be blessed and will be a blessing to all people as had been promised to Abraham long before. And so this song that is in, his, in a sense rooted in, in a frustration and an anger about the brokenness of the world is not a dirge to what is broken for what the child to be born must endure. It is a proclamation that what is broken will not last. That change is coming. For this gift from God, this child is going to be born. I, I think that then brings us to the last part of what makes this song so powerful. That there is this honesty about what the world is. There is this hope that this child to be born is the key, is essential, is God's response. And then there is the patience of a pregnant woman who sings this song, who knows that singing this song is just the first moment of what is to come. Right? For we get to read 
Luke 1, Luke 2, and we can read it in all of like five minutes, and Jesus has grown up. But Mary didn't get to like do it that fast, right? It, it is fascinating as we read scripture. It is important to remember the space between the verses. Like the space between the verses is that big. And sometimes the space between the verses is mere seconds. As Jesus says something and his disciple immediately responds and the space is like five seconds. And sometimes the space between the verses is an entire childhood. Right? Jesus is born, Mary ponders what's going on in her heart, and the next time we tune in, right, Jesus is 12. Like there is that much space between the verses, but Jesus is 12 now, right? That's a 12 year gap. And Mary didn't get to just like flip the page and keep on reading. Mary sings this song looking towards the future and knows that she's in this for a while, right? She is going to be at this for a long time. She has a long way to journey for this child to be the answer, right? There's, as, I, as I read this, the, the image that comes to my mind it is the way that Mary grabs on to the world that is in all of its brokenness and then it grabs on to the world that will be that her child is going to bring and she starts pulling them together one day at a time knowing that it's going to take a long time to do that and knowing that in the end it's going to be what her child does that brings those two together so that the world will be made right but until that day comes she has her role because now she's got to raise the kid and that takes a while right? all of this passion all of this is wrapped up, up into this song and i think that's that's why it is that she launches into song and i want you to hear this one last time to understand like just experience again what it is that mary is singing as like just like a musical she launches into song because it is so potent what she's saying like well, here it is again the magnificat the song of mary mary sings i'm bursting with news of God. I'm dancing the song of my Savior. God took one look at me, and look what happened. I am the most fortunate woman on all of earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. His mercy flows in wave after wave on, of all of those who are in awe before him. He has barred his arm, and he has showed his strength, scattering the bluffing braggers. He knocks tyrants off their high horses. He pulls victims up out of the mud. The starving poor sat down to a banquet. The callous rich left out in the cold. He has embraced his children, the chosen people of Israel. He is remembered and piled on mercies. This is exactly what God promised, beginning with Abraham and up until now. That's what Mary sings. That's what we're waiting for in the season of Advent. In the same way that Mary had the patience of a mother raising a child, bringing what is broken in the world and grabbing the world that's to be and pulling them together one day at a time, that's where we're at as well. We're grabbing onto the world as it is, saying, my child deserves better, and grabbing onto that kingdom that is to come and saying, come, Lord Jesus, come again, make it right. Thanks be to God. Amen. There, there is a, a, a poem that I don't read a lot of poetry. I stumbled across this poem once, and it seems to capture this sense. And so I invite you to pray with me. And let's, I'm going to begin with this poem by a Bonaro Overstreet. Let us pray. You say the little efforts that I make will do no good. They will never prevail to tip the hovering scale where justice hangs in balance. I don't think I ever thought they would, but I am prejudiced beyond debate in favor of my right to choose which side shall feel the stubborn ounces of my weight. Lord, help us to be people who, like Mary, are able to commit the stubborn ounces of our weight 
towards your kingdom. Knowing that in the end, it is your kingdom that's going to come, and it's going to come by your action, not by ours. And so we pray for the patience of Mary, that we might be able to have the long patience, the patience to keep on walking towards you one day at a time, with the sure and certain confidence that your kingdom is going to come and your will is going to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. May the hope of that kingdom sustain you this day and each day. Go forth now in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.